My girlfriend isn't vegetarian, so I lied and said she was eating shredded baby chicks. Now she wants to leave me, so here's what I did. So I, male 26, have been dating my girlfriend, female 24, for almost a year. I've been a vegetarian for two years, but my girlfriend, she doesn't eat many things because she just finds them disgusting. Like just the smell of certain things, often vegetables, to my detriment, can make her throw up. <laughs> Wait, the smell of vegetables? Cucumbers! <laughs> now, I haven't talked to her much about vegetarianism because I know she's not a big fan of it, which is fine. Chill vegetarian. Is not one of those vegetarians that just like waves it in your face. Yeah. yeah. Take until the last time we were at a McDonald's together. She ate a lot of her meals there because she likes almost everything on the menu. Besides the salads. Besides the salads. the cucumbers. <laughs> yeah, if he says she's more into the sugary things Yeah, than fast she likes food. the two-piece chicken McNutt. Now, I bought a veggie burger and fries while she treated herself to a 20-pack of chicken nuggets. Now, the afternoon was going well overall until she suddenly just started making fun of me. She laughed about how it would be weird to eat here as a vegetarian and that I I must hate the veggie burger and only eat it because there's nothing else for me. I was slightly irritated by this because she has never said anything about the subject before. And because of this, I stamped the statement as just a joke. Spring, bro. But throughout the meal, she made odd comments until suddenly she said in a mocking tone, at least I don't eat like grass. I laughed at that and amusedly responded with, well, at least I don't eat shredded chicks. They really do like shred those little chickies. Have you seen that video? I've, I've, I've seen a few. <laughs> she stared at me in shock and then looked at her food and asked me what I meant. Confused, I continued to explain to her that chicken nuggets from fast food restaurants are usually just chicks thrown into the shredder. Excuse me? Now, upon my explanation, she ended up choking, and I was about to ask her if everything was okay when she suddenly threw up on the table. Ooh, bad form. Yikes. Bad form. Not the best, my dude. The staff rushed to her, but she had already started crying and ashamedly sank into the bench that she was sitting on. That's crazy that he tells her that, hey, you're eating like baby chickens, and she goes... I tried to de-escalate the situation and I told her that I didn't mean it. Whereupon she stormed out of the McDonald's. I apologized to the staff for the trouble and hurried after her. Unfortunately for me, she had already left with our car, so I had to call a cab. <laughs> now we live in a rather remote house. I inherited the house from my grandmother and suggested that my girlfriend move in with me as I often only had the opportunity to visit her on weekends. So I waited for her to open the door, which she did suddenly after the cab driver drove away. Then she didn't even look me in the eyes before she went back into the bathroom. I ran after her and saw that she was packing a bag. She's leaving. Or maybe she's going to the factory farm to see uh, what really happened <laughs> yeah. with those chicken nuggets. I'm doing some investigative journalism. I then asked her what she was up to. She burst into tears again and reproached me for saying something like that when I knew what, what it would do to her and what I know it would mean to her. I did not answer because she was already crying and I let the matter just take its course. Girl is hysterical. Hysterical. Before she went out the door, she told me that she was going to spend some time with her mother. It's been about four hours since this happened and I don't know what to do. I am desperate. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? Well, he's just telling her facts, bro. I, I want to know what everyone else thinks. But what do you but think? First, put your answers in the comments. Mm -hmm, but what do you want to say? I think yeah. He needs a new girlfriend. On to the update. So yesterday, my girlfriend's mother contacted me. We talked about the situation and she was conflicted. Of course, she defended my girlfriend and told me that I had to be particularly careful what I said to her, especially when she's eating. On the other hand, she also found it unfair that as a vegetarian, she always drags me into restaurants that contain meat. So shortly thereafter, my girlfriend called me herself. Apparently, she did a lot of research into the McDonald's production and she was angry that I lied to her. She did a lot of research in the McDonald's production on the McDonald's website. Yeah. McDonald's.com. Do you shred baby chicks? We love our chickens and kiss them and tuck them into bed. Nevertheless, she wants to question her own diet now more in the future. I apologize for not thinking of her at the time. And then she and her mother talked and she apologized to me for laughing at me. Overall, the whole situation was a bit childish. My girlfriend and I went to meet up again today and talk about it face to face. I suggested speaking at McDonald's as a joke. She then hung up on me and texted me saying that I am a 
filthy a-hole and that she loves me and that we'll just meet at my place. Oh, <laughs> I guess no more McDonald's for us. She has plans of seeing the doctor next week about her little problem throwing up and I'm going to accompany her. Your comments showed me that I should take the topic a little bit more seriously and that's why I'll show my girlfriend this post today. Wish me luck. I wrapped up pretty nicely. I wish to know your thoughts and if either person overstepped their boundaries and was the a-hole. I feel like definitely the girlfriend is the a-hole for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, like, she's the one that insulted him. He was yeah. just giving her straight facts about exactly. the, the chicky nuggies. Yeah, yeah. It's like, the sky is blue. <laughs> and I think OP, you know, he could have been kinder with her. She sounds super sensitive. But honestly, it seems like it inspired a good change in her. Totally. Any diet that's not 20 McDonald's chicken nuggets is... Is a good diet. Thumbs up for yeah, that. Yeah, or at least a better diet than having that in you. That's right. My sister's in-laws kicked me out of the wedding for being a filthy divorced woman. My sister found out and made a little change to the wedding. For background, Stella and I are identical twins, 29 female, and we will both be 30 when her wedding comes around this fall. Oh, wow. I had her as my maid of honor eight years ago, and she promised me that I could be hers when her wedding came around. Very sweet. I have two kids, six female and three female. They're both flower girls. My marriage fell apart just over two years ago due to a stillbirth and my husband's infidelity. Ooh. My parents and my sister were the only reason I didn't drown from stress, loneliness, and total abandonment of my spouse. I was a total mess. I am under the water. <laughs> I went to therapy, got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, quit drinking, and I owe a lot of it to my amazing sister. She's the reason why I kept chasing down my ex for child support when he stopped suddenly paying. He suddenly switched from the world's best dad to deadbeat dumps so quickly that my ex mother-in-law is disgusted with him. Wow. His own mother. Come on. You're all, like, when your own mom was you like, going? you suck, you're doing it all Oh yeah, wrong. you're sucking heavily. Uh-oh. Nice. Stella and John, 35 male, got engaged last year. His parents are paying about 60% of the wedding. Our parents are paying 30%. Stella and John are paying for the rest of themselves. The biggest caveat is that they must be married in John's family church. Full mass with communion. The family is on board because this is going to be a very big wedding. Tonight, Stella had invited me to dinner as they had finally reserved a date for the church and reception. And I assumed it was to formally ask me to be her maid of honor. It only makes sense. Yeah, that's uh, be they had a cute. promise. Yeah. She was the maid of honor before. I was excited since I haven't been in a wedding party aside from my own wedding. John was with her. Weird because Stella didn't mention him coming at all in our text about the dinner. We hugged like usual, but John didn't. Weirder. What a piece of shit. After we got our drinks, they got to it. In a nutshell, John expressed the following. Despite my best efforts to keep it secret, my parents found out that you're divorced when they asked why your husband wasn't coming and they are no longer comfortable with you as a maid of honor because it won't look good to the church if my family hears about the divorce. Oh. You can be a bridesmaid, but can't mention the divorce or your conditions oh. at all oh. during the wedding events. There's more to this story, but John, Con what do you think? Conditions? Conditions. conditions. You, but your face about to get a condition, my friend, Damn, because bro, like, oh, it's just, it's just so dumb to me. And also, it's like, so dumb, especially with everything she's been going like through. Yeah. Well, where's the heads up? Well, like, there should be at least like some heads up, right? Yeah. Like this is what should have happened. She should have called up her sisters, like, hey, like John's being really weird about uh you being like maid of honor at the wedding because you were divorced. Like, you know, let's talk about it. Like, like I feel like OP was a little bit blindsided but we got more to this story john sucks i was stunned and i felt tears in my eyes stella started crying too and she tried to spin it in a good way this is way less stressful for you so it's a good thing mother-in-law has already proved my bff as my maid of honor so please don't make this any harder oh. i knew that i couldn't possibly stay there through an entire meal i had to process this new info alone i didn't Dang. speak i just paid for my wickedly expensive cocktail and left to order an uber home oh <sighs> A few hours later, I texted Stella that I would not be in her wedding party at all. Dang. That was my decision. I wouldn't pull my daughters out, but I would only attend as a guest. She wouldn't take this as an answer. So I had to temporarily block her due to excessive texts and calls. Oh my God. I sent my parents a summary of what happened and promised to call them when I was in better shape tomorrow. Stella thinks that this is a total overreaction. I don't even want to know what John thinks at this point. Please help me. Am I the a-hole? Okay, there's some more, but let's take let's take a little recon. Dude, yeah, I'm just like what like you 
literally got the the experience of being her maid of honor and now you're just like totally flipping it for the yeah. dumbest i just the, the reason is just so dumb the reason me. is I'm really sorry. really dumb the reason is really really dumb and it's like you know if this is how john's treating her own sister now what's it going to be like in the future yeah i think the one thing we've learned today is john is an absolute piece of shit. piece of shit. garbage and deserves honestly, to be thrown in a garbage anyone disposal. remotely oh. related or looking or sounding like oh. Oh. him thrown to the to the piranhas if, if you're john just jump in a river and don't come back i have a call scheduled with my parents this afternoon from what i gather they are extremely upset with stella and john at the moment depending on how that goes i will talk to my girls about doing something big and fun instead the more i think about it sitting through a mass sounds less and less appealing and i'm not even religious okay so now there's an update two days later okay John found this post as he lurks on Reddit and shared it with Stella. Yikes. I wish I used a fake name, Ursula, since she joked about that detail herself. Stella, Ursula, has officially called off the wedding. Damn, son. E Whoa. Oh, man. When John was ranting about the post and how bad the comments were painting him, he said that your sister must be off her gosh darn meds and going manic. You better get her butt under control. No. But then Stella, Ursula, actually came undone on him and began calling him out on everything that John and his family had put her through. Then she took off the ring and chucked it across the living room. Take that, John. Yeah, screw you, John. <laughs> I hate you. John went into a rage. And while he didn't do anything but yell at her, he threatened her in regards to her mobility issues. What? Stella uses a cane to walk. This is what triggered her to text our parents and myself. By the time our parents made it to the house, John was gone and she had packed up her bags and left with them. Her cane was not in the house. Dude, I, I need to know what everyone else... This story's not over yet, yeah. but please tell us what you would do in this situation. Oh. Oh my if you God, were Stella, man. would you break up with John? I think I would. Yeah. John's a filthy piece of duty. Stella wanted to thank you all for the comments calling her out. It shattered the mosaic that John built around them. Th this is actually kind of what we were talking about the other day about how like sometimes when you're being gaslit or manipulated, you don't know how deep the manipulation goes yeah. until you're outside of it. And you're like, oh, shit, totally. Like, I never realized I could feel so good. And while we're both still raw and processing the last couple of days, I am glad to have my sister again. She was someone else I hardly recognized a few days ago. As kids, I was more outgoing and she was more reserved, so I felt obliged to go along with her the other night despite how conflicted I felt. But again, Stella says, thanks for the wake-up call. And John, if you see this, f*** you. You know what? F*** you, Keith. <coughs> Keith is getting called out. Oh, goodness. Dang. Wow. Okay. Wow. I, I want to know what all of you think. I mean, one, should have st like should Stella have called out the wedding and done all of that? Two, what do you think of the, like the reaction from the parents and the support that they gave OP? And three, what do you think of like how OP thought about the whole process? Like, would you have done the same? What would you have done differently from OP? Have you ever been in this situation? And has anyone ever called off a wedding? I would love to hear that. Right. Yeah. I mean, like... <sighs> Guys, how we've said it so many times that we're blue in the face. There are has to be red flags before yeah. these, th these events happen. <laughs> yeah, and at and least it she caught like it before was. she got married. It seemed like there was. Like yeah. she said, like there was this mosaic of all these things yeah. that have happened, yeah. and she like said, like, oh, I'm just gonna look past it. But now, like, she's confronted with these woke right up in her face. To it. Yeah, it's man, dude. Like, what what is the solution? Like, how do we get these like divorce dirt bag? In yeah, this, this case, well, I guess b b b before you get married do the pre-divorce which is just dumping this guy yeah ass. honestly very lucky that she didn't get actually I know. married because imagine like like she the paperwork you have to do is so even annoying. just even just after like the day after like yeah oh so honestly bullet dodged i think um, oh for sure i would say uh obviously john and his family absolute a-holes like absolutely with out a doubt. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, like what? What can you really b put on OP? Like maybe maybe you could say Stella is a little bit of the a hole too for going along with it initially. I mean that was an a hole move to not defend I think so. her sister yeah, initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that I mean, was, she was so move. wrapped up in yeah, it. Yeah, I think gotta, we can cut of, her a little break. Yeah, but yep. I'm glad she finally came around. Yes. Yeah. I don't care if your mom's disabled and just got evicted. I will not let her live in my five bedroom mansion. So my mom just lost her housing a week ago and has 30 days to find somewhere else to go. She was on state housing and disability, but it was turned off without warning. 
my god we are trying to fight it currently but as far as i can tell she is not the only person that's happened to this month like hundreds of elderly people are going through this right now she has lupus so she has no job she's 59 and we have a five bedroom house three kids who have their own room and then the fourth bedroom is used as a shared office between me and my partner i suggested letting my mother move in here and letting her stay in our office which we would have to relocate maybe to the attic seems reasonable okay so you know what the wife said what she said immediately fuck no it is not gonna happen okay i got scared i remained calm despite her hostility surrounding the issue bothering me i tried coming up with every alternative imaginable and she shot down every single idea i found it a little weird because her and my mom get along really well like i'm pretty sure my mom likes my wife more than she likes me <laughs> so what's the issue here. What is the deal? So I finally snapped and asked her what is her problem and why she was acting so miserable. She snaps back with, last time I freaking checked. You're fully aware that I refuse to be around your mother's dog. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. This is because of the dog? <laughs> what the f <laughs> So you're, oh. you're going to let your man's mother be homeless because you can't deal with the dog. Can't deal with it. She goes on to say her dog is not coming here. Her dog is not allowed here. She won't get rid of her dog. Therefore, she has no place here. Bro, like no place. What is wrong with you? I'm appalled. I, I'm appalled. I, yeah, same. I'm appalled. Same. So I honestly hadn't even thought about the dog up until this point. My mom has a Rottweiler who's like two years old and he's a big boy. My wife does not like the dog at all, you think? So apparently my wife used to get chased by Rottweilers as a kid, but was never bitten. Uh, so, oh, so it goes back to childhood trauma. Goes back to childhood. Your trauma is lame. So she won't even give the dog a chance. She admittedly doesn't like any dog outside of retrievers golden retrievers is the freaking best i love golden but retrievers if they're so if they're much. like if they're raised wrong or have aggression i mean they can they can mess you up golden retrievers yeah of course you've met a bad golden retriever they're out there i don't believe it i told her she was being incredibly selfish for being unwilling to help my mother over a dog and she absolutely <laughs> lost it really she said that her life is not going to be revolving around taking care of your disabled mother and oh. taking care of an untrained giant Rottweiler. Oh, she said that she's also not chancing having this mutt around our kids while untrained. And she is absolutely repulsed that I am not seeing how dangerous it could be since we have small kids. She said, I'm an absolute prick and under no circumstances was she going to put my mother over the well-being of our kids. And if I do that, then I'd better see myself out. Wait, so man wants to take care of his mother mother and she's like divorce i think she's over the freaking top to be blunt am i the a-hole there's a small update after this but uh i gotta check in with everybody yeah. here i gotta Let check in know. with you what are we thinking i mean also like in a lot of households like across the world it's very normal for parents to move into their Super normal. sons and daughters yeah. homes mm -hmm. I, I would love to know what you guys think like like is op being the a-hole yeah uh, how would you react my wife is in therapy the therapy doesn't take away the fears. She said that mom could move in if she doesn't have the dog. But my mom refuses. Oh, she's like, no, no dog, no me. Apparently that's where we're at with uh. it. And it's actually my wife's house. She inherited it long before we got Ooh, married. That, so that changes the dynamic a little bit. A bit. I mean, I mean she's still an asshole. She works from home full time and has the kids. I work part time in office and part time at home. Oh, Whoa. my God. What a doozy. Oh, my God. You're just y'all are just going to have to tell us what, what what would you do here? Truly, what would you do in this situation? Uh, we Come need on. to know. I mean, like also, like, have you guys ever had a parent move in? Because I feel like, yeah. like a lot of families will have their parents move in like when they get older. Yeah. And the dynamics of the household can change a lot. And so I'm wondering, like, what does it actually feel like for the people who actually experience it? That's a fair point in question. Like, it, I mean, it, it's like not, you go from the caretaker to the caregiver. Giver or yeah, like take, take and it's not necessarily yeah. an easy thing to have like a whole no. other adult in your your life. It's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we want to know what you guys think. I I think 
the uh, at the very least, the wife has some unaddressed trauma Ugh. for sure. I think she's being I mean, I, I think like she's being a little unreasonable. So unreasonable. Unless the dog has like a history of attacking children. That would be totally yeah, more that fair. Change, that would change And maybe, it. you know, at the end of the day, this is one perspective from one person in the story. So it's like, exactly. Maybe so like, that's something happening? he's intentionally omitting and he's yeah. just like making her seem like a monster when yeah. actually it's like, nah, think like, of our children. The, do the dog is literally just like, just yeah. like jumped 10 children. Like, I mean, I think I, I, like I'm thinking of my mom. My mom would probably not want a Rottweiler or a pit bull in our house. Yeah. Do they not have a yard? Like, yeah, but even in the yard, she's, she's like, I don't want that thing that she's like, hates pit bulls and Rottweilers yeah. because they've like multiple of them have attacked our dogs in the past. And now she's just profiled every yeah. pit bull and Rottweiler. She's like, <laughs> no, funny. Uh, not for me. So I like, I like, I think those people do exist. Is it rational? I don't necessarily think so. But at the end, also, it's like, it's her house. You know, she's allowed to be an asshole if she wants to. She's in a way, in a she has the ultimate decision yeah. making. It's not like if they bought the house together and split the mortgage, then yeah, it's like a joint decision. Yeah, but you know, it's really but, her decision. But she's just, she's just such an asshole. I'm I know. sorry. I'm kicking my pregnant sister-in-law to the streets, selling a $2.5 million house and keeping it all for myself. Am I the a-hole? That sounds like you're winning. Real quick, I want to point out that me and my brother have two different fathers. I, 19 female, lost my father last year to cancer and he left me 90% of his stuff, including his family home that was left to him by his dad that's been in the family for over a hundred years. Holy moly. My brother, 34 male, and my dad didn't have a relationship, but he did leave him 10 grand. And my mom was pissed at the will reading since she got 10 grand but she couldn't do anything about it. That's all she got? That is rough. She only got 10 grand in OP, 19 years old, got 90%. the whole house. For the past year, me and my mom have lived okay together. She went on acting like it was her house before, which I had no problem with, until May, my brother and his girlfriend, 30 female, moved in without even yeah. asking me. Yo, it's OP's house. You can't Bro. just be doing that. So in August, they announced that they were pregnant, and and my sister-in-law smugly said, well, guess we won't be moving out now. I'm kicking you to the streets. I don't care. Hey, hey, you and your baby. It didn't go down well, but when I told them I wanted them out, my mom and brother basically laughed in my face. What? You think you're going to be alone in the house that you own? Uh, <laughs> fat chance. Well, the past few months have been hell. They've become worse than before, and my mom enables it and demands me to treat my sister sister-in-law like a princess because she's pregnant. I once had to wait outside a McDonald's until they opened to get her a McMuffin. What? Well, I might be the asshole at this point because my sister-in-law is pregnant. She eats everything she sees. Like, for example, the cupcakes my friends made me for my birthday. Oh, man. Not the cupcakes. Ugh. She ate all six of them and I didn't even get to try them. I can't even make my lunch the night before because when I go to get it, it will be gone. She's like the cookie monster, <laughs> but with everything. She'll have a smug look on her face while rubbing her belly and then laugh ha, ha, and mm. say, I couldn't help myself blame the baby. God, I hate that so much. It's baby we only put on 300 pounds. And if I put my stuff in my room, my mom will open my door with the spare key so the sister-in-law can go through my mini fridge. What the f***? This woman is eating everything. So a week ago, I was running late to college and I didn't have time for my breakfast or to make lunch and I had to go to work straight after. So all I had had that day was a bar of chocolate. When I got home, I was starving. I made myself dinner. But while it was cooling down, no. I went to use the bathroom. No, you're freaking joking. I must have been in there for 10 minutes at most. By the time I came out, she had eaten 90% of my dinner. I literally lost it. Of course she started crying and of course my mom and my brother started screaming at me for making her cry and saying excuses like how she couldn't help it and it was my fault for leaving out food around her. Is she, she a dog? dog? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd had enough. I told them 
to get out. Just like before I had mocked. But here's the thing. Back in October, my uncle offered me a life-changing amount of money for the house. So I called him up crying a few days ago, explaining the whole situation. And he said he'd buy the house and he will evict my mom and brother. They of course did not take it too well. And I have had to stay with a friend and I've been receiving texts and being tagged in multiple posts on social media. I'm starting to think I'm the bad person now. So am I the a-hole for making my mom and my brother homeless? Okay, there's a few quick updates, but Sam, how are we feeling right now? I'm feeling pissed. You feeling pissed? I'm feeling pretty pissed. I'm pissed! Like, OP's just getting abuse after abuse, and all OP's trying to do is eat food. The eat food! So I do not think OP's the a-hole. The pregnant lady definitely is the a-hole. And the fact that everyone's being like, she doesn't have control over herself is ridiculous. If I sell the house to my uncle, I I will actually lose a hundred grand, but he's always been good to me. And it's one of those situations where I'd sleep better knowing it's going to someone in my dad's family. My mom told me because of my age, I wouldn't be taken seriously if I tried to evict them. If I evict them and continue to live in the house alongside with the financial costs, I don't think they'd ever let me live in peace. My mom does have health issues and my sister-in-law will have to move in with her parents and they won't allow my brother. So I'd be splitting up a young family in my mom words. And guys, I'm actually crying. I've never been told before. I'm proud of you. And the fact that I've seen threads of comments telling me this means the absolute world to me. I do plan to meet with a lawyer and will update you as soon as I have news. Since people were curious, the house is worth $2.5 million smack dab in the heart of London. Wow. That, that is, is location, 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 location. So with that additional context, everything, how are you all feeling? And Sam, what do you what do you think? I, I still think OP should evict them. It's it's what let's say all that's true. Yeah. yeah. That OP is breaking up a young family, family and all yeah. that. It's still because they just weren't respectful at all. But I would maybe rent it out. OP doesn't need the, all that space. Oh, yeah. So rent it out. Pay me my money. <laughs> it's totally possible if she really, really was smart about it to almost not have to work. And oh, just yeah. have that be like the main easily source of income. I know, but what do you guys think? Like, let like, us know. Maybe we're, we're, just maybe we're some finance advice right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we went in our bag. Hey, let us know. My sister's ex just proposed to me on my sister's birthday, <laughs> but I just found out why they broke up, and I don't think I can marry him. I'm gonna say a very controversial statement right now, Sam. Controversial. Hit it. I don't know if marrying your sibling's ex is a great oh. idea. So basically, I'm 24 NB, non-binary. My boyfriend friend slash fiance is 25 male and my sister is 26 female and I don't know the ages of most of her friends but roughly around the same age. My sister and my boyfriend slash fiance do not get along well. I don't really know what happened. I think my sister is just upset because she has issues with commitment and she dated him at their high school. I went to a different high school and then cheated on him and is upset he broke up with her. What you doing over here? Sis. I met him in college and didn't know it was him. Now what happened is last week it was my sister's birthday. So she threw a big party at a venue in the forest. Me and my boyfriend slash fiance were both invited. We've been dating for a few years and he's never been invited to one of my sister's birthday parties before. So we were both thrilled with this development. So it sounds like they're kind of getting along. Okay. At the party, my sister was busy opening all her presents, then eating cake, both of which we were there for. Afterward, my sister started talking to her friends and the guests started to explore the area. And it was stunning. Me and my boyfriend were a little away when we found a little clearing. We we're still pretty close to the venue, but I think it was a pretty private area. My boyfriend thought so too. So he got down on one knee oh. and proposed. He didn't have a ring. He had one at home though, but he had woven a ring out of grass while we were walking. We were both very fidgety. So he put that on my finger after I said yes. Oh know about a grass ring, bro. I think it's kind of cute. To take a pause really quick, what do you think about proposing at someone else's event? My thing is like you can orchestrate another moment like that. Also, it feels less personal. Like if, if I was like, let's have this romantic forest date. Oh my God, that sounds amazing, amazing. right? Great setup. But, but it's like, like Greg from work's party. And I'm <laughs> like, all right, I get, this seems like it's good enough. <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't as private as I thought because it's a party at the forest. <laughs> because when we got back to the venue after taking a selfie and scheduling a post,
host for a few hours after the party, I was bombarded by a shower of congratulations. Turns out my sister's friend Lisa saw my boyfriend propose and came back to the venue and told everyone. While I was being congratulated, another girl, one of my sister's best friends, came up to me and asked to see the ring and told me, wow, he even skipped out on the ring. <laughs> he couldn't plan his own proposal or get you a nice ring. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> True. That's no. what I'm saying. I was upset because I wasn't even planning to tell anyone. If someone noticed the ring, I would... <laughs> What's that grass on your finger? If someone noticed the ring, I would tell them, but I wasn't going to announce it to the world or do it in public where everyone can see us. We left immediately afterwards and my entire family has been blowing up on my phone, calling me an intention-seeking B-word and that I shouldn't have done that to my sister. I'm worried that I might be the a-hole because it was my sister's birthday and if I said no, maybe she wouldn't have been upset about my boyfriend proposing. I want to know who you think the a-hole is in the story. Please put it in the comments right now. John, I feel like you have some strong opinions on this. This boyfriend is whack. Boyfriend is whack. Whack. I don't think OP's the a-hole though. Some relevant comments. So someone asked, did he know you were related to your sister? He didn't know it was me. I don't think so, at least, until we went to meet the parents and my sister subsequently. And there is an update. I've never been good with people. I have undiagnosed autism. So it didn't occur to me that my boyfriend might have been lying about my sister. Hmm. I told him that I was going to be thinking about some things, gave him back the ring. Oh, the grass? And called a friend we both knew in high school. He said that apparently my boyfriend was lying. I knew he was a dirtbag. See, I was in a student exchange program when they were dating, so I never knew what happened. Since the drama died down before I got back, apparently my boyfriend not only lied about my sister cheating, but also lied about why they stopped getting along. Apparently, not only did my sister not cheat, but the reason they broke up is because my boyfriend did. Come on! Cheat, that is, with his brother. <laughs> what? At least that's what the rumors that went around said. Neither of them shared, and then they tried to sleep with my sister, which is why she got cold around him again. Wait, so the boyfriend cheated on someone else with his brother, and then they both tried to hook up with his original ex? I'm confused. That sounds kind of insane. So as far as I can tell, he might have proposed to me as a twisted revenge scheme of some kind. <laughs> And there is a final update. But John, what do you think? I mean, I knew this guy was a dirtbag from from a jump. So go me. He sucks. Oh, wait, there's there's some clarification. Oh, apparently the rumor that went around was that either my sister broke up with him because she walked in on him and his brother doing stuff or my boyfriend broke up with her because she didn't want to do things with both of them. Those are the two biggest rumors at school. Neither shared the real reason, but the brother was definitely involved. There is a final update. My sister requested we keep our distance, so I wasn't talking to her because of that, but I arranged a meeting through my mom and yeah, I'm realizing I was used like hell. Luckily, I can now call him my ex. Yes. Unluckily, he is not taking it well. Oh. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Let us know what you think. This is a crazy one. Yes. The thing I'm most interested in is just like how people's significant others proposed and what was the worst proposal or best proposal that you've uh, ever experienced. Yes. And also, we want to start interviewing people in the comments about their stories. Yeah, so we do. please submit them. And submit them on r slash OKOP show. Because then we can reach out to you and be like, hey, like, come on the show. We want to interview. I'm kicking you and your miracle baby to the streets. The baby is loud and it's your fault. Am I the a-hole? You know, why people be making loud ass babies? Yeah, why you can't know? you just rip their vocal cords out and have a little mute baby? Wow. I, 34 female, live upstairs in a duplex with my two boxer pity mixes. I lived here for five years with my ex who recently moved out. Last year, my neighbors, 31 female and 30s male, moved in downstairs after the unit had been empty for a while. They were good neighbors until this year when they had a baby. Uh-oh. Apparently, they had to go through IVF and had a bunch of miscarriages, and she posted all about it on Facebook. I thought that was TMI, but whatever. I'm only her Facebook friend because she added me. She's made a big deal about being pregnant, and it's been annoying to see, but I just ignored her. Anyway, since she's had the baby, I've had to deal with crying from downstairs. It's not as bad as I expected, but it's pretty damn annoying. I've gone down and knocked on their door multiple times to say, keep that freaking noise down. Make that baby shut the hell up. I saw this product where it was like a baby silencer and it was like a little mask that you put over the baby to make it stop. Every time they apologize and blame their baby, but nothing has changed. I got fed up and reported them to our landlord for making too much noise. Bro, 
come on. The landlord talked to my neighbors who are now turning it around on me, saying my dogs are too loud and I play music at night that wakes their baby up. A little reverse Oh no! My dogs aren't loud and hardly ever bark when I'm home. I got annoyed and went down to talk to my neighbor about it and she got really nasty with me and blamed me and my dogs for always waking up her baby. She said she could hear every one of mine and my dog's footsteps and the dog's nails on the floor specifically. That my dog bark the whole time I'm not home during the day and that I put my music way too loud at night. I told her I can't make my dogs not bark when I'm out. You can't control another being that doesn't understand. Interesting. And that their dogs on hardwood and that I didn't know what she was expecting living in a downstairs unit. Maybe you should be on the penthouse like me. Yeah. I also told her I'm allowed to have people over and my music on whenever I want in my home. I don't think it's fair to ask me to change my life when I'm not the one who had a baby. I don't give a shit if I make your baby cry. Just make it stop. I can't change my life, of course. All you have to do is abandon your child. Like, it's so simple. Put it in the dumpster. Oh my god. My neighbor got an attitude and told me she was only asking for me to be respectful of our shared space and brought up hearing an argument I had with my ex a few weeks ago. I love how the walls are so thin that she could, like, detail the argument that he had with his ex. She's been waiting yeah, for that Yeah, she's like, one. hey, I really think you should go to couples counseling and, like, she might be right and I think she also might be cheating on you. I admit it was a little loud, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I laughed and told her that pretty much went out the window when she had a baby, but then she shut the door in my face. I reported the whole conversation to my landlord, so there's a record of my complaint because I want them and that baby out of here. When I was telling a friend about what was happening, she told me I was being a major to struggling new parents, but I think that's their problem and not mine. But I wanted to get some unbiased feedback from that friend because that friend is usually a little emotional for my taste. Oh my God. Wow. I want to know what everyone thinks. Please, Please put it in the comments below. Have you ever had a screaming baby next to you in an apartment or on a plane or otherwise? What would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Type it down really quickly. But John, <laughs> let me know what's the verdict. Okay, I will be honest and be like, it definitely kind of, you know, is unfortunate if it's like you live like literally live like in close proximity and then someone has a baby where it's just like okay now you're kind of by proxy you know might catch some of those you know the cries and stuff it's an unfortunate thing but it really just is what it is you cannot control a freaking baby maybe I mean it sounds like there's some music and some dogs like that might contribute to the baby crying so maybe that's something you should work on if literally. you don't want the baby to be crying literally uh, and also there's a comment from a loverly one says so it's okay for you to make noise that you find acceptable, but require the neighbors to stop noises you don't? Come on. You're the a-hole. Facts. I mean, that sums it up. My boyfriend refuses to remove his dirty anime posters. Ooh, ooh. But what I found in his car is even more concerning. My boyfriend is into anime and dirty anime. He has a lot of shirts with anime little watermelons <laughs> and other memorabilia and stuff. Personally, I've never understood the appeal, but I'm not going to yuck his yum. Whatever rustles his jimmies is his business. He used to have a very scandalous poster on his wall of a character tied up and all drippy. I took it down when we moved in together because I don't want to look at that. That. Also, when are you going to look at the red flags <laughs> dripping you in the face? It makes you uncomfortable, and I think it's weird and perverted. I'd never try to make him change his tastes or feel bad about it. I just don't want to look at it every single day. His shirts, stickers, etc. He can have his own personal space, but I don't want it in mine. Yesterday, we were going to go somewhere in his car. He comes out of the house with a dangly pendant to put in his rearview mirror. It's of a character with her hands tied above her head, tape on her watermelon points, spread eagle with a dripping conch shell. As soon as I saw it, I was grossed out. But when he put it up in his mirror, I was flabbergasted. I didn't want to tell him to take it down because it's his car and stuff, but it was just swinging a foot from my face the entire car ride. If that was going to be every car ride with him, I wasn't going to want to drive with him at all. So when he could tell it bothered me and asked if I wanted him to take it down, I said, yes, please, God, please take it down. That it was weird and it made me uncomfortable to look at. He was quiet and upset the rest of the day. I don't know if it was my place to make him take it down. I don't want to be the controlling girlfriend <laughs> type. I just couldn't stand looking at it. Am I the a-hole? Everyone, please yes. tell, tell <laughs> OP if she's the a-hole or not. Please. But John... What do you think? It's just too much, bro. You got it. You <laughs> got it. You got to tone it down just a little bit, bro. I don't think it's a weird thing for you to ask him to take 
no. some of this stuff down, especially no, 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 if you're no, no, like no. spending all the time there yeah. or you're in his car. What if you move in? Is he going to have these giant shrines to these anime girls all over your house? Let us know what you think in the comments. Please. My girlfriend walked out of dinner because she found out my parents are gay and told me that I'm the a-hole. Am I? I'm actually really offended because... Uh, I didn't I, tell you their sexual orientation. How am I supposed to be matchmaker for your parents if you don't tell me what kind of thing they like to, you know, suck on? <laughs> Love I'm it. 25 male. I have two parents. My birth dad, John, who's 48 male, and my other dad, Dwayne, who's 45 female. Or oops. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Sam! <laughs> and my other dad, Dwayne, who's 45 male. I call my birth dad, John, dad, and I call my other dad, Dwayne, pops. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love that. My birth dad, John, was married to my mom for a few years. Then she left my dad, and yeah, they ended up divorcing, and now she's somewhere in California. I don't know where, or what she's doing haven't talked to her in ages so dad and pops i'm super close with they are the best parents any child could ask for i love both of them and they've always been with me my dad introduced me to pops when i was a little boy and they told me that they were in a relationship and i was all for it because i had seen my dad become lonely sad when he was single and so the fact that my dad loves someone and has a life partner made me super happy let's Go. Pops and dad got married and we've been living an amazing life. I'm probably more close to Pops than my own dad due to the fact that Pops is really cool and he's laid back. I love both of them equally and they love me too. What the heck? This is too nice. This, this isn't is a Reddit story. Too cute. For a few months, I've been dating this girl, Bella, who's my age. I thought she's pretty cute and liked her. So we kicked it and recently she told me my parents want to meet your parents and want to come over for dinner. I said, sure, I'll tell my family. So yesterday, Friday night, Bella comes in. Pops greets her and says, come on in, sweetheart. Dinner is ready. She says, you must be blank dad. So good to meet you. And she shakes his hand and she sees dad come out of the kitchen. Uh oh. She's holding the mac and cheese tray with mittens and is putting it on the table. Then Bella says, <laughs> who the f is this guy? No. Then Bella says, who's he? I said, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> she said, I thought he's your dad. I do love the like, uh oh, is this? Uh -oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. She's referring to Pops. I said, yeah, that's my Pops. And that's my dad. She pulls me aside and said, I didn't know your parents are gay. Oh my God. Why didn't you tell me? I generally didn't know why that it would be an issue or anything because you're dating me, not my parents and all. So it shouldn't matter. But I guess it's a concern for her. Her parents come at the door after they parked and Bella tells her parents, let's leave. And they oh left. Oh my God. Okay. Or there's a little <laughs> bit more to the story, but like I could totally see like, like, dude, why didn't you tell me? Like, I, I had get, no idea. I get like a heads up just, just, just to know. But just like, to know. I'd be like, I'm like, oh, I, I, I well, know. like, honestly, like, I more like, what are your parents' names? Just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to know yeah. about them. Like, yeah. I would have, I, I kind of would have known. People? Yeah, just as people. And yeah. the fact that I guess this girl didn't know anything about the parents. Yeah, is a little odd. Which at first is like, okay, you can kind of understand it's a that. Jarring, but it's then like, she's running to away? catch her parents at the door, and she's like, That's yo. Uh, that, it's a little it's a I think it's oh, totally okay to be like a little like oh sh I, I didn't know yeah like, yeah like you should have told me yeah. like in the same way that you should have told me that your parents were named like Lucy and Jim yeah or whatever right and they were a hot beefy man hot cakes. Be yeah a little bit, a little bit weird. Anyway, I told my parents, I'm sorry. And they said, son, don't worry. This is nothing new. And then we all sat down and enjoyed dinner and went to sleep. So am I the a-hole for not telling? I want to know what everyone else thinks. Put in the comments right now. Immediately do it freaking right now. If yes. you're not typing your little sweet little high hands oh. on that keyboard, oh. I'm going to give you a spanking that you know you've wanted. Oh, dear. But John, while they're doing that, <laughs> let me know what you think. I Yeah, he should have just mentioned it just in terms of like the general like, Oh, hey, like, like usually if it's like, oh, like, what do you like? Tell me about your, like, what do they do? Yeah, like, tell what, me about your parents. You know, just, just to, just to tell me about your parents' yeah, vibe. Like, where I, are they? Like, I, my, I knew the story. That, yeah. Like, like, oh, I don't really talk to my mom much. You know, I feel like yeah. once you or reach. Like, like, my, my mom's from Australia. My dad's from America. Exactly. Like, exactly. like there's just like general trivia about yeah. the parents like, that you should know. My dad f***ed butts. Like, it, it's just, it's just <laughs> this part of the conversation. That you have. Literally, when Ariana and I were going to meet my parents, I'm like, hey, just so you know, my mom is fucking my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you critical know. Critical information, critical, bro. Critical. But other than that, it's like, that was, 
honestly not like that huge of a slip it's up. Not, on it's his not part. that huge. I mean, and then her he reaction is right that he doesn't he doesn't like he you're, you're dating like dis- him. Yeah, but the big like a hole move was her part leaving for leaving. Are you kidding? What? Disgusting. Disgusting. But honestly, hey, self filter. There we go. You don't want her. You, you don't deserve need her. better OP and you your dad. You deserve better. That's right. Mm. Also, they sound like an amazing family. Literally, I what a fairy it. tale. I love it. I love Adorable. it. Adorable. Adorable. Misogynist says I'll never be able to have kids. Fine. Here's how I'm going to get my revenge. Yes, the misogynist. Ooh, yes. So my female 35, sister female 27, started dating one of those brutally honest guys a few months ago. Otherwise known as an asshole. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> he can be quite rude and make backhanded comments about me and the family sometimes, which is bothersome. But my sister says he's not malicious, but he's just brutally honest and we should just get used to it. He's just trying to speak his mind. He j- he's just expressing himself. Bro. He's so alpha. Yeah. I visited my parents' house to celebrate my sister's birthday, and my husband couldn't come with me because he was busy. After the party, we all sat down for dinner, and my sister's boyfriend said it was weird that my husband and I don't have kids despite being married for six years now. That is such an out-of-pocket statement. Why? It's Why would it- weird how uh you are barren? <laughs> Uh, I thought a woman's purpose was uh, to have children. (laughs) And I see that you are without. So uh, you have no purpose. I was shocked that he brought this up, but I gave a short answer stating that it's because of infertility issues. He asked on which side. Insane. Why are you trying to get more info on this? He's like, yeah, who should I blame for this? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to answer, but my sister said it's on my side. Also way out of line. Yeah. My God. Uh, like from your own sister. For each other. I got uncomfortable as he looked at me for a second and said that maybe not having kids now is a good thing because he thought that women over over 30 might produce defective babies due to age. Bro. What is wrong with you? I think you are a defective baby, good <laughs> sir. Literally. Like, my what age was your goodness. mother? Like, you don't go saying shit like that? Defective babies, At a bro? freaking dinner party? <laughs> what an asshole. Insane. I told him it was none of his business, but he said that he's just giving his honest opinion. Your honest opinion fucking sucks. <laughs> he's just expressing himself. I, in return, told him while maintaining eye contact, trust me, if I wanted an asshole's opinion, I would have farted. Literally everyone at the table burst into laughter and my sister and boyfriend were stunned. Shame. Shame. A few seconds later, her boyfriend excused himself out and my sister followed, then sent me a text afterwards saying that they left, saying I was mean, disrespectful towards her boyfriend and insulted him maliciously just because he stated his opinion. Yo, his opinion sucks. She also said said that I ruined her birthday by being petty and making her boyfriend the joke of the night in front of the family. I didn't respond, but she demanded an apology via mail. Some reason <laughs> as soon as possible. Why via mail? It's like, so weird. What is this? Apology pigeon. Dear sister, I am so woefully sorry. Mom agreed that I shouldn't have said what I said and should have just ignored him knowing how he is. I don't think I'm the a-hole, but I'm not sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's put this to rest. Light, light up those comments. Yeah. Let Sam. us know. Sam. Okay. Say it. I'm about to say a hot say take. It. I'm actually about okay. to have a hot take. Okay. All right. I think OP is a little bit the a-hole. Okay. All and right. the reason I say that is although he was an asshole, I think he was like somewhat unintentionally maybe. So he's okay. like asking okay. like, like re- kind of fully questions, but I don't think he was like, he wasn't intent. I don't know if he was being intentional by like making OP feel uncomfortable. And then OP went and just was like this dude and insulted him directly. I think he deserves it. The nicest thing that OP could do, like maybe tell the guy, Hey, really uncomfortable with these questions. Can you just like not ask those? Yeah. And then if he crosses the lines, like then, then maybe bring out another yeah, thing. Like you could also like pull him aside and be like, why are you asking me these? These like, these are really hurt. personal questions. And yeah. These hurt me. For real. Yeah. I, I know. But hey, Zinger worked pretty well too. So that's right. But what do you think? Put in the comments. My stepsister says she's having a baby with my boyfriend. Now she's sending evidence and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Sometimes evidence can be uh, hard to take in. Oh yeah, it can be hard to take in. So I met my 25 female boyfriend, Tim, 26 male, three and a half years ago. We hit it off and he was great and sweet and we got along perfectly. It was a 
fairy tale. Very genre. some. Until I introduced him to my family. My mother had gotten remarried a few months earlier. I, like my stepdad, would get along fine. My stepsister, Sarah, who is 26 female, and I were friendly, but not besties by any means. She's kind of an intense party girl, and being in our 20s, we only saw each other at family events. So I introduced Tim to my family, at which point we learned Sarah used to date Tim. That's a weird dynamic. Shit is. Yeah, they used to date when he was 20. And Tim said they broke up because she made out with another guy at a nightclub while drunk. Sarah got upset and started saying I had to break up with him because it was too weird. Huh? She called Tim her sloppy seconds and tried to get her parents to force us to break up. What is wrong with this woman? I said no. Nope. It had been years since they'd been together and I didn't even know Sarah when she was dating Tim. I got pretty upset because my family jumped on the bandwagon and said we should break up. Bro, these families. What? These families. Well, I would have thought the family would have been in OP's corner. See, that's the logical response, Sam. That's what a that intelligent is human baffling. does. That is baffling. For the past few years at any family gathering, Sarah would mention how they used to date and act like I stole her boyfriend and has been selling that narrative to family and friends. It became obvious that she was just jealous. Yeah. But I liked him, so I ignored it and we kept dating. So now, a few years later, Tim and I live together and we've been talking about marriage and stuff and I recently had a conversation with my mom about how I thought Tim was going to propose because he's not exactly subtle and we've talked about this for a while. But things are that's good, yeah. At which point, Sarah, who uh -oh. just moved back in with our parents, walked in. She started asking a bunch of invasive questions about our relationship and being weird. Okay. What's going on? So it turns out Sarah is four months pregnant. Oh. The father, she said, was some deadbeat guy she hooked up with who wants nothing to do with her. Okay. But she wants to keep the baby. Okay. Okay. I thought it was going to be. Right. Uh, Tim. Tim, yeah. But luckily it's not. Okay, okay, okay. As far as we know. I'd been making an effort, taking her to appointments, and offering to help babysit, and trying to be excited for her. Until a week ago, when my stepdad sent me a long text saying how I can't marry Tim because he is the real father of Sarah's baby. Is that true? My source is that I made it the fuck up. What proof? I want I want some proof. Yeah, there's because no the family proof is being The family like, was, was For all we know, crazy. this is some elaborate prank. Yeah. Hold on OP oh, to make them break up. That would be such a terrible prank, but also something that would happen on Reddit. I was immediately very upset and confronted Tim, who is completely shocked, <laughs> and said Sarah was lying. Which, honestly, Sarah sounds like a liar. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, Good track record of maybe. it. Maybe. He said there's no way he cheated on me, and he would gladly have a paternity test to prove it. Unsure, I asked Sarah for more details about when they slept together, which she says happened a few times. She was shaky Whoa. and went back and forth into details. Bro, she's just lying. Why is the family taking her side? Sarah sucks. <sighs> the dates and times don't match up with what I remember of what Tim and I were doing. She said she came to her house to see him, but since COVID, I've been working from home. So I can't imagine how they manage that. I'm pretty sure that she's lying to get us to break up because she's still jealous. Imagine Sarah just got pregnant to make the breakup. Oh, yeah. That would be one of the more insane things we've actually ever we've but seen. But now lot. my family is involved and has been sending me hateful <laughs> messages saying I need to break up with him and let him be with Sarah. What? Never Why? Because she cheated? Family. So well, she maybe because it's like... In their mind. In their mind that it's it's his... It's t Tim. Tim is hooking up with Sarah and Sarah is holding Tim's baby. But it's like... Tim still cheated on OP. But at least the family unit would be together. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess. Yeah, There's I guess. There's some I guess. logic here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's telling everyone he's in love with her and I'm keeping him from her. She has no proof and he strictly denied everything. I texted her asking her for proof of any of this happening. And she sent me some fake Photoshop screenshots oh. that I can tell are fake. Where she put Tim's name over a friend's number and pretended he was messaging her. I checked and the friend all but admitted to me and tried to laugh it off. She badly photoshopped the timestamp. Wow. I actually don't know what to do now. I believe Tim and we are still together, but this is kind of throwing a wedge in everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's, totally. it's, this is a weird situation. Sarah has poisoned my relationship with our parents and my family, which is also insane that the parents and family are taking Sarah's side. Beyond ridiculous. Especially with her track record. It seems like you're just a liar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel sick to my yeah. stomach and Sarah is now saying she won't give me a paternity test. For now, I've cut everyone off except Tim, but I don't know what to do. Well, there is an update. Oh, but what would you do? 
Uh, <laughs> don't know what to do. You've come to the right place. We're going to tell you exactly what guys. to do. Uh, just kidding. We have no idea. Okay. I want to know what everyone would do in the comments. So put yeah. it in. And if you've been in a situation like this, which I hope you haven't, tell us. If I was OP, one, I would definitely try to do everything in my power to get the paternity test. Just because the, the crazy thing is OP just being pulled in both directions where it's like at first she was like, oh my God, Tim was cheating on me. Now she's like, oh my God, Sarah was lying to me. I feel like her, her like reality field is just so like warm warped right now. Yeah. It would be nice to get some concrete evidence that the, the of, of DNA test the baby is not yeah. Tim's. I would also just sit down with the parents and like, why are you believing her? Yeah. You stupid bastard. Well, there is an update. Okay. All right. All right. I'm buckling in. I had forgotten about this post because my life has been so hectic. I understand OP. Yeah. Not everyone's first instinct when their life falls fit <laughs> is to go to Reddit. <laughs> Some people's though. The baby was born yesterday and reminded me. So I'm going to give an update. I spoke to my parents. Tim offered to do a paternity test. We gave them an ultimatum to believe me or have me out of their lives. Initially, my parents backed Sarah, mostly because she was pregnant and had nobody else. The deadbeat who knocked up Sarah reached out privately because he had been sure that he fathered Sarah's baby as they'd been hooking up at the time and he wasn't sure what was going on. Sarah told him she was having the pregnancy terminated. Wow. Deadbeat reached out to my parents and said he wanted to fully support the child and Sarah. Deadbeat doesn't sound so deadbeat. Doesn't sound so deadbeat. And he could have been there the whole time. I know. Oh. Uh, Turns out he's a plumber. Yeah. That's, that's not the only thing uh -oh. he's a plumber. With a very good income and wants to be a dad to his kid, but he doesn't want to be with Sarah at all. Sarah still won't admit to lying about the affair, but after realizing people weren't falling for it, she switched to faking a mental illness to cover for her deception. I do believe this though. She is mentally unwell, just not in the way she tells it. I also figured out what a master manipulator she is. She fed my parents tidbits and small lies to make her giant lies seem more credible. Tried to slowly turn them against me so they would more easily believe Tim was in love with Sarah. Things are still strained with my family, but I feel I'm making progress and Sarah has moved on to getting attention for being pregnant slash sick so she's not obsessing over Tim anymore. Though, I refuse to be around her. Baby was born today and I pray for that little guy. It's going to be a long and difficult life with that mother. My cousin went to visit and sent me a photo of the birth certificate. Father is listed as as the deadbeat guy. And one more little update. Oh. Tim finally did propose. Hey! But we're planning a long engagement and Sarah is not invited to the wedding. Mic drop. I yes. love when it, right, it just wraps in a little bow. Oh. Feels so good. Oh. Feels so good. Yes. Man, but what a roller coaster. Sarah, oh, yeah. absolute maniac. It's crazy that someone could lie so obviously to us, like we're reading the story, but yeah. everyone involved just doesn't realize it. And I think that's probably what happens a lot in these stories where there's mm -hmm. one person who's manipulating the whole situation yeah. to make it seem like the same person is not really sane. Like if she was like, okay, I know I'm going to like, you know, come out as, like as soon as she found out she was pregnant, she yeah. revealed like four months pregnant, right? So she probably was planting, planting those seeds, seeds for four yeah. months. Insane. Farmer Sarah. <laughs> Uh, plowing them fields wasn't the only thing yeah. plowed, but I'm really curious about like everyone's experience with like manipulators because like yeah. like I feel like that's something that actually is pretty universal is pretty, it's pretty universal yeah. pretty common like we, we've all experienced people that either by in, like, intention or unintentionally are manipulating you or others around you and it just F's up everything yeah we would love to know your manipulation stories yeah let us know I ruined my brother's wedding cake and his marriage Marriage. But he had it coming. You know, some people just deserve it. Some people deserve it. And sometimes you have to be the person to give the justice. Just to be clear, I didn't actually do anything to the cake, but I'll just start from the very beginning. Growing up, my brother and I would play pranks on each other. I say each other, but he would prank me mostly. Relentlessly. Any of you who are younger siblings will know that there will be that one particular moment that often comes up even as you get older and it goes something like, hey, remember when, you know, that story they'll retell to cackle at something devilish they did to you as a child. Yeah. Our story was about a jar of cookies. Grandpa was an amazing baker and he made me a batch of cookies for my birthday. Ninth birthday, I believe, which he'd seal in an airtight glass box for me. I don't know how or when, but my brother got a hold of the box and proceeded to, well, fart in it, then sealed it back up. Oh! On my birthday, he handed me the cookie box and said, Grandpa put some extra stink into this batch. <laughs> 
I didn't know that he meant to the moment. I was too excited to try what looked like delicious cookies. I opened the glass lid and got blasted in the face by the stench of stale ass. <laughs> <laughs> That immediately threw up into the jar. Oh my god! <laughs> All over the cookies. A tale my brother has told repeatedly to his delight since. Fast forward to now, my brother's wedding day. Uh oh. This wasn't a thought out plan. I hadn't been scheming it. It was spur of the moment. That's how you know it's good. Oh yeah. My brother had retold the story yet again at his bachelor party three days prior to embarrass me, and I guess the story was fresh in his mind. Ceremony is over. All all went well and on to the reception. They're posing for photos before getting the cake. And I don't know what came to me, but I just leaned over to my brother as his wife was about to take a bite. And I said, I put some extra steak into this cake. Nice. <laughs> I thought he'd laugh. He did not. With the reflexes of a mother leaping across to rescue her newborn from something dangerous, he slapped the cake out of her hands. They were gassed. <gasps> some laughs. <laughs> No one really knew what was going on, me included. He whispered in her ear. She looked me in the eyes for a good five to ten seconds, then just started to cry. What do you think the brother thinks is happening? I feel like the brother maybe thought he took it to another level and like, like, took a dookie in or something. <laughs> Put your bets on what's happening. She runs off. Everyone is confused. Then my brother confronts me. He told me he thought I did a sh** the cake as revenge for the cookies all those years ago. I told him I didn't and it was just a dumb joke, but he was too mad to listen. She told her bridesmaids I did a sh** the cake too. Sure enough, soon everyone thinks that I took a sh** in the cake. Oh my god. I mean like how though? I was too embarrassed to protest so I just went home. It's been a week and I've not spoken to them nor anyone else in the wedding bar my life and I keep feeling guilty even though I didn't actually do anything am I the a-hole so there's more to the story based off what you know so far is OP the a-hole as of right now I'm gonna say not the a-hole I texted my brother to come to my house after work so we could talk he bluntly accepted we didn't get to really talk though because as soon as he pulled up in his car he started yelling at me on the driveway turns out my prank things up more than I realized. After I left the wedding reception with my tail between my legs, they got into some kind of argument and didn't even go on their honeymoon, for which he blames me. He is still maintaining that I took a in the cake, and the reason is that a lot of people here realize that my naive nine-year-old self didn't. He did a in my cookies. What he didn't realize is his brother shat in the cookies. Oh, I obviously didn't get the specifics mid argument, but it came out and that's what he did. I don't know how, as it was a glass box. So you would have seen like a park turd on top. You can only assume he smeared it along the bottom as some type of paste. So people thought it was just chocolate oozing out. When I vomited in the box, he got away with blaming it on a stale fart. He thinks I figured it out in in the cake as revenge for something that happened nine years ago. I tried defending myself. In fact, some of your responses help. How would I do this? Is the baker in on it with me? Did I pull off some elaborate ruse to get access to the fully formed cake to <laughs> in it? He wasn't having any of it, though. He says he knows I shit in it, and he's going to get the cake forensically tested to prove it. He's even threatening legal action. Eventually, my wife had to intervene at the shouting match on their doorstep as he was getting increasingly aggressive. <laughs> she was worried he may get violent. She got rid of him and I just went back inside to try to process it all. I got in touch with his wife a few hours later as people's responses made me realize that even though my brother may be an asshole, her big day was definitely soiled by my actions. Thankfully, she seems a lot more forgiving than him. We spoke on the phone for a while and she knew the truth about the cookies not farts, which is why she believed him when he said I sh** in the cake but as they argued through the night, she realized that I was innocent. I didn't want to pry, but it sounded like there had been relationship problems that led up to the marriage anyway and his overreaction was just the tipping point. She's now moved out <gasps> and is staying with her parents and I suppose my brother finds it easier to pin the blame of their problems on me than reflect about his own behavior. I brought up my brother's claim about testing the cake and she actually laughed which reassured me that he's the only one thinking about such desperate measures. In conclusion, I may have been ruled not the a-hole but my actions have ruined a marriage. She's moving out. My brother is lawyering up. They're getting an annulment and I may or may not receive a subpoena about a poo in a box. Wow. So OP's one sentence 
sentence just ruined a marriage. Oh my God. Okay, so I want to know, has your answer changed? Is OP the a-hole or not? Still not the a-hole because like he yeah. was saying, like, oh, there was like all of these problems in their marriage before. And now it's it's more clear that the reason why the brother was reacting so much is he's just like, he's just trying to push all the blame yeah. off of himself. Yeah. So, what do you think? I mean, what did, did OP's joke go too far? Yeah. I think the, the fact that the brother thinks that OP has been holding like a 20 year grudge or like a 15 year yeah. grudge, whatever it is, is crazy. Well, what would you do in this situation if your brother was trying to sue you and you broke up with his marriage? Poop what would on you the do? lawsuit. Yeah. Poop on the, the, the papers. <laughs> You've been served. Uh, oh, so have you just use this. I just found it. I'm pregnant, but my mother-in-law thinks I had a baby with another man. Then my father-in-law made it even worse. My father-in-law is the father. Dun, dun, dun. I, 27 female, used to be a escort from 18 until I was 23. I'm not proud of it, but I also don't give an F because I did what I had to do to keep studying and keep a roof over my head. That's how I met my now fiance, 37 male. Through hooksing? Although he was never my client. So how did they meet? Let's find out. We began to date when I was about 25. And three or four months after that, my brother-in-law exposed me. No idea how he found out. Because there's no way my fiance knew. And thus, we had to come clean to his whole family. Is that something you keep from your fiance? I don't know. I feel like the fiance should know. So yes, I did it. Yes, he now knows. Yes, he doesn't care. Um, All right. Stand-up guy, I guess. There we go. It was two years ago at the time time that I had stopped and we got over it. After that, there was a span of three to four months in which my mother-in-law and some of my fiance's aunts and cousins would police their husbands when I was around. Oh my God. It was really weird to be honest because these dudes were like 40 to 60 years old and I was not that desperate. Do you think they made any offers? So my fiance shut their BS down hard. And even when his family still gives me the side eye from time to time, we thought it was behind us, but it wasn't. It's never behind you. <sighs> Your past follows you forever. That's right. Now he proposed to me last year and five months ago, we found out that I was pregnant. Congrats. Congrats, OP. We were really happy about it. And we told his family as soon as we knew his sisters and young brother were happy for us. But his mom took me aside. Oh, geez. Had a little word with me. Same. Is this our client baby? Yeah. <laughs> You've heard of affair babies, but have you, you heard, heard of, of client, client babies? babies? She begged me to be honest with her and asked if this was really my fiance's child. Dang, bro. <sighs> That's a rough line of questioning to be subjected to. I was taken aback, but I rolled my eyes and said yes. And she gave me some BS speech about how she only wanted to make sure and that she was so happy to be a grandmother. Yikes. Well, last weekend, we were with his parents and with his family and some other friends, and we were talking about the baby name, how he might look, just small talk. We love him regardless. There's no, oh, I hope he gets your nose or, oh, I hope he gets your eyes type of comments. And then my father-in-law said that he and his children have a birthmark on their inner thigh and that even his grandchildren, one of my sister-in-law's kids, got the birthmark too. So our baby might also have the birthmark. Huh. But then he said, but how can we know from whom he got it? It may as well be from me, my boy, or one of my brothers here. That makes you look bad too, bro. We decided to keep it in the family. He and his brothers began to laugh and laugh away. What are the vibes thinking, dude? <laughs> Oh, my God. My fiance got mad. And before he could say anything, I said, uh, I don't get it. And my father-in-law said, yeah, because, you know, it uh, <laughs> runs in the family. And I said, I don't get it. Why would I get it from you? Thank you. I love this effect. It's just like challenging them on the yeah. joke. Yeah, explain. Then he just began to get nervous and said, because, you know, well, it was a joke, OP. And I said, but I don't get it. And you all laughed. Explain. Explain. That is such a good tactic. Yes. It got to the point that some of his friends said, hey, it's not funny, man. So he excused himself and left. 
Later, my fiance's brother-in-law came to me and said that I was wrong for embarrassing him like that in he his own house. He embarrassed himself. Come on. But it's his own house, Sam. Ugh. How could she? Hey, you, she can't stop him from embarrassing himself in his exactly. own house. You can just expose how much of a dick he is. Yeah. And that I knew what the joke was about because of my past, of course. And I shouldn't be surprised. Now they're all demanding that I apologize to my father-in-law. This is the question, ladies and gentlemen. Was OP the a-hole for exposing <laughs> the father-in-law? Or uh, was the father-in-law the a-hole? And was the mother-in-law the a-hole? Yeah, so I don't think OP is the a-hole at all. Yeah, I think the father-in-law definitely the a-hole. What did the mother-in-law do again? She asked her, is this really your baby? I think that is uh, definitely the a-hole. Definitely not okay. Yeah. I see it as like a little more excusable not excusable but just like like i understand uh where the assholeness is coming from yeah. i just have to commend op for this tactic use that use uh their own logic against yeah, them. play dumb yeah make them explain what the joke is and then they'll be left explaining just this terrible ideology that they have all op did was ask him to explain the joke she used the socratic method just literally. ask some questions baby. literally i'm beyond mad at my father because he did the unspeakable bought me a brand new car when i I, 17 male, was eight years old. My parents bought me a piano and signed me up for lessons. Man's just getting gifts on gifts. Oh, I'm a rich kid, but I'm not that rich. Over time, I kind of became known as the piano kid at my school. Sick. I play at school concerts, accompany the school jazz choir, and play once a week for residents at a couple of retirement homes in town. He's making all those old ladies swoon. <laughs> when I was 15, I started talking about quitting lessons, and my parents quickly tried to guilt me out of it. I told them I wanted to try other things and that between piano and studying no not allowed how dare you i said between piano and studying i did not have much time left for extracurriculars so my father proposed a deal if i kept playing and taking lessons until i reached 10 rcm royal conservatory of music and i continued to keep my grades up at school he would buy me a new car of my choice I jumped at it and we shook hands on the deal. Nice. I should explain that my family is well off financially. Ooh, oh, you don't say. I had no idea. Oh, Your yes. family is so well off. I have a very privileged life, but I wouldn't say I've been spoiled. You wouldn't say you've been spoiled? Listen to this heartfelt next part, okay? All right. If I ever wanted a luxury item like a new phone or a game console, I would have to purchase it myself with my own own money I've saved from summer and after school jobs. They only gave me 10000 a week for pocket money. <laughs> I should also explain that my dad is big on loopholes. When we compete, he always finds a way to win. And when I do it, it doesn't count because of some loophole. It drives me nuts, but he thinks it's hilarious. Whenever I complain about him not playing fair, his answer is always the same. Life isn't fair. Fair. Except to us because we're wealthy. Because of our deal, I kept up with my lesson. I spent about one to two hours a day on piano while keeping my grades up. Yeah, I mean, he might be spoiled, but at least he's hardworking. So last summer, I took the level nine RCM exams. And remember, he just needs to get to 10. Yeah. And he passed. I told my dad that I had chosen the BMW X5 plug-in hybrid SUV. Now, a couple of days ago, on my birthday, I came downstairs for breakfast. My dad told me that there was a surprise waiting in the garage for oh me. shit i ran out and sitting in the middle of the floor was a beautiful shiny 124th scale toy of a bmw Oh, yikes. My dad burst out laughing and said, a deal's a deal. So as promised, here is your brand new BMW. My heart absolutely broke. I asked him if he was serious. And he said, I couldn't seriously have expected him to buy a 17-year-old a real brand new BMW. Yeah, it's a little bit of an asshole move. And he said that we would discuss getting me a reasonably priced used car. I said we had a deal and I fulfilled my end of it. He said he did too, since I never said this car had to be full size and drivable. That's so sh So I told him he wasn't being fair. His response? Life isn't fair. 
fair. This guy sucks. I don't, I don't like this. I like and somehow I'm rooting for spoiled OP right now. Ever since this happened, I've been distant with my dad. I honestly feel like he betrayed my trust and he deliberately made a fool out of me. He keeps bringing up the idea of the used car, but I told him I am not interested, which I admit is kind of petty. A little petty, a little, a little petty. petty, but it's just like, don't lie to your kid. I have enough money saved that I can buy a cheap used car myself. And I just feel like if I accept one from him now, it's like saying that breaking his promise didn't matter and that he didn't do anything wrong. So am I the a-hole? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to know, is OP the a-hole for being petty? Is the dad the a-hole for pulling this stunt, even though he has a rich, spoiled little brat? What do you think? I actually don't think the kid is the a-hole for, yeah. for making the deal. I think the dad is 100% the a-hole yeah. for, like, essentially lying to his kid. Yeah. Like, like the loophole thing is essentially, is, it's just a lie. The dad is right in saying that, like, do you really expect me to buy, like, a almost $80,000 yeah. car for it? Too? But then you say that in the moment. Yeah, I just feel like how the dad went about it is maybe preparing OP to be a lawyer, not preparing him to have a good relationship with his father. What do you guys think? Would you do this as a parent? Yeah. Tell us. See ya. Bye-bye.